Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I am actually still in the middle of the wiring video, but I am going to start working on the fuel system. So if you saw the wiring video, you'll know that I had to pull the or lift the bed up to get access to the fuel tank and everything. And in doing so, I decided while I already have the bed up, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the fuel system, changing the fuel pump out, starting to run my fuel lines, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, we're pretty much going to pick up right from there. So as you can see behind me, I have the truck with the cab or the bed bolts already taken out. So I have six out of eight cab bolt or not cab. I keep on saying cab. I have six out of eight bed bolts taken out. So the three frontmost ones, there's two in the front in front of the fender well, two in the rear behind the fender well. I have the two in the front and the furthest one forward in the rear taken out. And then I loosened the rear ones up so that it can actually have room to pivot back. Um, you can see I already have the lift here in position with ratchet straps connected to the hooks on the front. Um, and it should be, in theory, it should be as easy as picking up on the lift and the bed will start pivoting back. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try doing that and we'll see if I can actually get the room. I've done this before. Um, with my dad, but now I'm doing it by myself, so hopefully I don't screw anything up. Oh, and before I forget, I also disconnected the fuel filler neck here. Um, that's just pretty easy. It's one, two, I think just two bolts and then a little clip at the bottom, so not too bad. Okay guys, well the plan changed a little. As you can see, I now have the engine hoist up here and it's gonna be connected to this, these back two uh, hooks in the truck. I already went under and unbolted the last two bolts and then I unplugged the harness to the tail lights and undid the ground straps to the frame. So, this thing's pretty much ready to go. I decided that, you know, instead of uh, just lifting the front of it up, I'm gonna lift the whole bed up. That way I can actually get get under it pretty easily. So I don't know if you guys saw while I had it up tilted, you can only get through the fender well and get access to the tank from that way. And that, that's a little bit more than I want to do. So I'm gonna see if I can lift the whole bed up and maybe move the truck forward a little and get a little bit better access to the, uh, the fuel tank and the fuel system. That way I can actually work on it. So if I were to do this the right way, I probably would have had the truck turn around in here and then just lifted the whole thing up from the lift, but we don't have that option right now. And from the bottom at that um, and pick it up, but we don't have that option right now. So I'm gonna use the engine hoist, to pick up on it, and I'm gonna use the uh, lift to get the front up and we'll get it as high as we can. And then I'll probably end up rolling the truck forward some. That way we have a little bit better access to the uh, to the tank. By the way guys, I know you can see inside the bed it's a mess. That's where I've been storing some of my parts, so don't really pay any attention to that. I know it's a mess, but this truck's still a work in progress. It's not done, so. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start lifting the bed up. Okay guys, as you can see, we have the bed picked up from the frame of the truck. We have plenty of access here to the fuel pump and the whole top of the tank basically. So we rolled the truck forward a little once we got the bed up and yeah, I mean we have all the room in the world to work on the fuel system here. I need to do some wiring. I said that previously I need to work on the wiring for the power to the fuel pump and the uh, fuel gauge, all that wiring. I have a new fuel pump I'm gonna put in, so I need to work on that as well. I need to pull this uh, assembly out and switch the fuel pumps out on it. Uh, I'm going with a higher flowing fuel pump that's also safe to use E85 on in case in the future I wanna use E85. I'm gonna go ahead and try figuring out some of this wiring first and then I will end up pulling this assembly out. All right guys, so I went ahead, uh, peeled back the wiring. I changed the, some of the wiring that I needed to do for the uh, fuel pump, which was really easy. I just snipped one wire and put another one in. That's the reference for the actual fuel pump 
or the fuel level gauge. I'm not sure what the reference was for, but it's one of the references that go in here um, to this plug. So we have an aftermarket fuel pump and uh, housing on here. That's why it's got a different plug on there. It was actually, uh, th this pigtail was crimped onto the original harness. So yeah, but I have the one wire I need going through there. There's another connector under the truck that has the rest of the wires that we need to get to but we don't need to work on that right now. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this fuel pump assembly housing off. Uh, I went ahead and took the air hose uh, and blew off around the top of the fuel tank. You don't wanna get any of that dirt or grime or anything in your fuel. Just best not to have that in there. So yeah, basically just gonna take this fuel pump assembly out, uh, tear it apart, get to the actual fuel pump, and I'm gonna go ahead and change that out as well, and then, uh, yeah, that'll be ready to go uh, to drop back in. Once we get that drop back in, then I can start changing out the lines here because we're going to the dash, I think I'm doing dash six lines, dash eight lines, one of the two. I'll correct it right here. Um, but we're switching to one of those and it's all gonna be flexible lines all the way through. So that will be nice. It will allow us to have uh, better fittings. It'll also allow us to use the 85. Um, if I want to, I just want to have the option of it. I'm not saying I'm going to, but I want to get this fuel system up to a level where if I wanted to run E85 in the future, everything can handle it. Because these rubber hoses, they'll get ate up with the E85. They'll just uh, rot through. So need to make sure we have good lines for that, which we do. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out this fuel pump assembly. we go here's our fuel pump assembly all right now with the fuel pump assembly out I'm gonna go ahead and try taking it apart I believe you just get these clips here and you can slide it off All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the new fuel pump I have. So it is an aeromotive pump. Go ahead and open it up. Got instructions, warranty information, uh, another filter. So this will be the pre-filter that goes directly to the fuel pump inside the cup. Hose clamps, little piece of tubing, a sleeve to go around the fuel pump, harness connection, and last thing we have here is the fuel pump itself. Aeromotive, Aeromotive Stealth. I um, believe it's a 340 pump. I'd have to look instructions again. I'll uh, put it down here somewhere. But yeah, so this is the pump I decided to go with. It should do really well and it is also uh, safe to use with E85. As I said before, if I want the option to use 85, I'm gonna take it so went ahead and made sure the whole fuel system's E85 compatible. Okay guys, I just had the fuel pump all the way into the uh, assembly here. I'm not gonna put it in all the way, but got it all the way in and we had interference issues when trying to put this uh, bowl on for it. So if you look down in there, this left, or well the top side for the camera, if you look down in there, this top side, there is plastic there where the old fuel pump would go in. So let me grab that. Uh, it also had this uh, brown, this brown rubber grommet here. So that brown grommet goes on to that check valve at the bottom of the bowl, um, like this in that orientation. Well, let me get that out. Um, with the new fuel pump, it doesn't go in. It's got one big inlet here. You can see it's covered with the cap right now. Um, but that goes in there and that interferes with that plastic. Um, and we'll definitely have interference when we put the filter on right here. So 
I need to go down in there, trim all that off, uh, at least all of that boss that's sticking up there, um, and try to get it to where my fuel pump will actually fit. I was not really expecting to have to do this, but I got to, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, I also gotta, so I gotta do the rewire, do some rewiring here. You can see how big this pigtail is for the power that plugs into the pigtail that they uh, sent with the fuel pump. And the one for the S10 fuel pump, it's right here, you can see it's a lot smaller um, and it doesn't really work out. So I know that the gray wire is power, black wire is ground. Um, I might see if I can repin this plug to accept these wires uh, on the pigtail. If I can do that, that'd be great, because then I wouldn't have to worry about soldering, splicing, and all that. But I'm not worried about that right now. Right now I gotta trim the bowl so I can actually get the fuel pump to fit. So that's what I'll be doing now. Okay, so I wasn't able to get the filter all the way down in the tank, because, actually, I wasn't able to get the filter all the way up in the cradle here, because of, this, uh, so this is the rubber isolator that was used before, and as you can see, it's not a straight hole all the way through, it's got a top here, and that wasn't allowing the fuel pump to go high enough up in the cradle so it wouldn't bottom out. So I put the isolator that it came with on, I was able to get it up higher out, All the whole red part on top of the filter was basically sticking out. And then I was able to get the filter all the way down uh, and clip the cradle in to the bowl. So I'm gonna clean the bowl one last time. I'll spray compressed air into it. And then I will put the pump into the cradle here, all the way up in. Then I'll put the pre-filter for the pump on. Uh, yeah, I'll put that on the pump. And then I will close the assembly all together and it should be good. Then I'll just have to do the wiring, get all that done and taken care of. After wiring, then it's ready to go back in the truck. All right, guys, we're back out here for the next day and I'm gonna continue where I left off. So I'm gonna try getting the uh, pins out of that connector. Once I get those out, if I can get them out, I'm gonna try repinning it for the uh, new connector for the power uh, because the Aeromotive fuel pump came with a different power connector. So I'm gonna go ahead and try doing that. If not, then I'm gonna have to cut it and solder it, uh, which I really don't wanna do, but if I have to slash need to, then I'll go ahead and do that. But um, we're gonna try to keep it as clean as possible. That's the, that's the plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. Okay guys, so I was able to get this pin out. It's pretty easy to get it out. As you see on the top of this pin, on this, uh, I guess that's on the lower portion of your screen. There is a clip there. Um, so this is a standard plug uh, that accepts a spade connector just about. And when you go to push this in, this clip here clips into the connector itself. And that's what you have to put the screwdriver in to uh, pull the pin out. I thought I had the right connector. It's the same size and everything. As you can see, there's a massive hole on the top, so it doesn't have that uh, clip to keep it in, uh, to keep it secured into the plug. So, got the plug here. If I go to put this in the correct way, as you can see, I have it all the way to the top. It's out of focus, I'm sorry guys, my camera's having trouble focusing. Um, but as you can see, I have it pushed all the way into the top, but it won't stay secured into the connector. It easily comes out. Uh, and that's because, again, it doesn't have that clip on there. So what I'm probably gonna have to do, as much as I don't wanna mess with the wires there, I'm gonna end up probably cutting this wire, probably give it a decent amount, maybe this much. So if I, oh, well, if, help if I was in frame. Um, so what I'm probably gonna have to end up doing is cutting this wire. I'll probably cut it somewhere along here so I have some room where if uh, my solder joint doesn't work out or whatever doesn't work out, it will, uh, I'll have some room to play with. Uh, but yeah, I'm probably gonna have to cut this wire and splice it as much as I didn't want to. We have the connectors, we just don't have the right connector. We have very 
very similar connectors but or uh, pins but they're just not the same so that's what I'm gonna get doing I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off uh, do some soldering and you know all that fun stuff and then plug it into the connector and do that for the same way for the ground wire the black wire as well and then we should be uh, good to go And there we go guys, we got this new connection together, so next thing to do is uh, go ahead and plug it in. Alright guys, I last left off where I took off the little pivot point for the float that I have over here. Um, the float is what tells you where the fuel level is, and it spins this along the bars here with these contacts. So I took this off because I was having, this was wobbling back and forth and uh, causing the contacts to lose signal. So what we ended up doing is machining a nylon spacer to put on here, which is this white piece. And that should allow for um, there to be no play. I also took the contacts out, or not took them out, but I took the contacts here and I bent them out more so that they would uh, always be in contact with the contacts here. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on and hopefully everything works the way we planned. I have a feeling that's gonna be way too much pressure because once the float goes up, if it can even pull it up, it's not gonna go back down freely. So that's an issue. I think I'm gonna have to get this machine down a little more. All right, got a new spacer and it is thinner. I'm gonna go ahead and bend the prongs down a little, a little bit again. Then get this lined up, push her on. Pretty sure that's still tight though. I don't think it's gonna fall back down with the weight of this. Try it. Oh, well. oh looky there. Get stuck like that, the truck will. Well, that's shift. because it's got a breaking point and it's getting past that pivot right there. Yeah. But the truck will shake that loose. But there we go. So now she's ready to go back in. Alright guys, we got the pump in along with the sensors connected. As you could see, we were using a bronze punch to uh, get under here and hammer it down, uh, twist it around. We used the bronze punch so that it wouldn't create a spark. You have very little to no chance of a spark happening with a bronze punch, uh, but if you use a steel punch, steel on steel, you could possibly create a spark, which you don't quite want to do when you're working on your fuel system, fuel pump, anything fuel related. Everything should be good. The next thing on the list to do is to make the lines. So this green one here on the end is our uh, fuel coming out. It's going to be our pressure line. The left side is our return line. And the middle is a vent. So yeah, that's just how this played out and how it's going to 